Welcome to Shampoo and Booze, a podcast about Airbnb and short-term rentals at shampooandbooze.com. We are Ryan and Ashley, sisters who run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week, we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. Send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to cover topics you care about. We are also available to give design and listing advice for your Airbnb or short-term rental. Check out our services page at notperf.com to book a time with us. Hello, and welcome to episode number 68. We are talking about coffee. Yes, that can fill a whole episode. But first, I wanted to mention this week, Airbnb started allowing hosts, certain hosts, I think it might just be super hosts right now, but I'm not quite sure, you can make a custom URL for your listing. So what that means is instead of how it is now, where it's airbnb.com slash rooms, numbers and letters and random things, like that's your listing. Um, Now you can actually have a URL in plain English. You know, like you can have something like awesome farmhouse near lake. That can be your URL, airbnb.com slash awesome farmhouse near lake. I wouldn't advise making that your URL, but you know what I'm saying. So we will link to the article that says how to do it. Basically, what you do is you go into your manage listing page. And I actually had a really hard time um, finding this and Jay found it. Thank God. I was like, I can't figure this out. (laughs) Um, So you go into your manage page and you scroll all the way down past like title and description. And there's a if you're a super host, I think it's just for super host. There's a custom link section where you can edit the custom link. So the reason you would do that is because you want uh, search engines to be able to find your listing with those words. So you want to use keywords that you think people are looking for in Google that are going to come up. They had this thing where they, they sent you the ability to click on the link at a very specific time because I think people were really trying to get special, especially in big cities. They were trying to get, you know, like Boston loft apartment or New York City, you know, by the river or whatever that, you know, they wanted those URLs. But luckily, I'm in a place where that's not a problem. But um, yeah, so check that out. Uh, The specialized URLs are very cool and everyone should try and do it if it's available on their listing. Yes, let's talk about coffee, shall we? Yes. Now, we talked last week about Airbnbs we stayed in. And one of the things we always bring up is what kind of coffee they have, what kind of coffee maker they have, if they don't have a coffee maker. And I will say, like, there are people in the world who don't care. And to that, I say, what? (laughs) I mean, look, I think one of the most important things for people when you're traveling um, is to provide these very basic beverages that people drink all around the world. They drink coffee and they drink tea everywhere. So you should always have coffee and tea and you should have several different ways to make it. I'm not talking like 10 different ways. Let's talk about coffee and tea first before we talk about how to make how to make them. So I always try and provide coffee, good quality coffee, and we'll get into that. And a black tea, a green tea and an herbal tea, just that kind of basic, you know, someone wants a cup of tea before bed, or someone's a English breakfast drinker in the morning. So those are important. I mean, we, I, I've been to multiple Airbnbs where it's like they have like the random tea sampling of random things they had left in their cabinet. And that's just a sad, sad state of affairs. Well, it's not even just a sampling of stuff. It's it's a lot of times it's stuff that other guests have left there. So one of the last places I stayed, um, I didn't like their coffee. So I was like, I'm just going to have some English breakfast tea. It's so simple. I'm just going to have it with cream. It's no big deal. Did they have any? No, they had chamomile. No, it's fine to have chamomile. 
but you should have black. You should have English breakfast or Irish breakfast, some kind of black caffeinated tea. Not chai tea. Like chai tea, I mean, absolutely have a whole spread, but chai tea does not, or even Earl Grey, those things do not equal a black English breakfast tea for tea drinkers. Right. So you can have both of those. This is like, this is like nerd hour right now because (laughs) English breakfast is the top tier. You must have English breakfast. If you want Earl Grey, that's a bonus. Jay loves Earl Grey. He doesn't want to have English, but he loves Earl Grey. So that's great. We have Earl Grey at our rentals. Chai, I think is fine because sometimes people drink chai um, after dinner, but don't just have chai. And don't just have Earl Grey. You have to have the basic. And then don't just have herbal because there are people who want caffeinated tea in the morning and, you know, chamomile or sleepy time or peppermint. You're like, no, that is not happening. Like, that's for later. That's for people who don't drink caffeine. That's fine. You should have all those things. And you don't have to have 10 different kinds of tea, but... Unless you provide powdered caffeine. (laughs) Which will kill you. (laughs) <laughs> um, by accident. <laughs> right. So, it, I mean, honestly, we're, we are. We're talking about caffeine, right? You're like, you've been traveling all day or you're in another country and you have uh, jet lag, you know, and you're just like, that's important. So tea, yes, black tea, green tea, herbal tea. You can have all those things, but you have to have black tea, a basic black tea, not Lipton. Look. Lipton tea, I don't even use Lipton tea to make iced tea because it is very poor quality. You don't want that. You want something like Twinnings. Twinnings is very basic. You Like where I live, you can't get like fancy English organic breakfast, whatever. Like we just buy Twinnings. We buy it at Walmart. It tastes good. It's like some of the best stuff in the world. If you want fancy stuff from your local you know, tea shop or whatever, you can do that too. But what kind of, what kind of teas do you have? Uh, Honestly, I use, uh, Whole Foods makes like their own 365 brand black tea and they are great quality and you get basically a huge bulk box. It's like a big, it's like a double or triple box from a regular tea box. So I feel like that's always a good bang for your buck. Yeah, just don't do Lipton. It tastes horrible. Yep. Great. Um, In terms of coffee quality, we're, Mm -hmm. I mean, we're pretty much, you and me both are both coffee snobs. Like, I want some pretty nice coffee. You don't want to break the bank every time you're providing coffee for guests, especially if, like, for me, I run three houses right now. I got to have, like, something that's a little more scalable. So I, because I have a smaller situation, I actually buy Equal Exchange coffee because it's really good and I can order it like on subscription on Amazon. So it's like, it just kind of shows up and it's good and it's ground. And I don't have guests, I mean, because I don't have more than two to three guests at a time, they don't go through pounds and pounds and pounds of coffee. Um, So one other thing I was going to mention is if it's available to you, and you don't have three houses like Ryan, um, it's a great opportunity to uh, showcase a local roaster. I mean, this is where we get super nerdy about coffee, but it's nice, I think, when you can to showcase local businesses that you should take that opportunity. So I think local roasters are great in that way, especially if they have a coffee shop or something around the corner. What you could do too is if you have a local roaster or a local coffee shop that gets coffee from a local roaster is try to buy it in bulk if you do have a lot of places i was i was actually just thinking that like i know these people who are coffee roasters they're not in my town but they're in the next town over and i'm like oh i should just go like buy a big bag and put it in every house um because right now what i'm doing is i buy just like the starbucks stuff at either the starbucks stuff or anything that looks good at costco i buy the huge bag because People people will bring their own coffee, but they will drink your coffee if you provide it, which we always do. So we do go through a lot at this point. We're like always sending coffee over to our houses. So I just get the huge thing at Costco. I get it ground. 
I either get it ground at Costco or I put beans over there and we have grinders at the houses too, which again, coffee nerd, like it's good to have coffee grinders because if people do bring their own coffee from the little place that they stopped at on the way, you know, on their little road trip and they want to grind it, they have to be able to do that. But I do actually love that idea of like, if there is a local roaster, go and say, hey, I'm going to buy like a two pound bag every other week. You know, can I or more than that, whatever, can I do that? Because sometimes they don't package it that way. Or can I make a deal with you? So can I tell you a funny story? I was staying at an Airbnb two summers ago, and friends said, hey, you should bring up the coffee. And I was like, great, I was going to stop at this local roaster. You know, I was going to get like two pounds of coffee, you know, so I, I didn't think about it. And I got beans. I showed up at this Airbnb and I didn't have any way to grind them. Like there was a coffee maker and everything, but there was no way to grind the beans. But the hilarious thing is because I'm like a thrifter, mom had given me a coffee grinder that had been in my car for like six months. And I actually had a coffee grinder to grind these beans in the middle of nowhere. Anyways, so I thought that was kind of ridiculous. So the moral of that story is sometimes having a coffee grinder is really helpful because people will bring their own beans sometimes, especially if you've got like you have like a lake house or, you know, place in the woods. Well, it's funny that you mentioned a thrift store, too, because look, if you're trying to get a coffee grinder, like you don't have to get this like. I have a friend that just got an espresso maker and she spent like $200 on a grinder because it's a perfect, she got a professional grinder. You don't need that. You need like the little, uh, grinder where you take the top off. It's like a, it's like a crops, you know, like that you see them at thrift stores all the time. They're like $5, like whatever you, 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 you gotta have, you gotta have a grinder because it's just like you said, people might bring their own or they'll go to the store or they'll go to the little coffee shop down the street and get some beans. I've had I, I had that happen a couple weeks ago where we went to an Airbnb and we were like, oh, we got this gorgeous coffee from this roaster that we like specifically went to on the way to this trip we were on. And then we got to the Airbnb and we were like, oh, they have K-cups with no grinder and no drip. Like you can't do anything. Can we just talk about K-Cups for a second? Yeah, that's like, yeah. K-Cups are like a big no. I mean, I understand the theory of it, right? Is like you just buy these little pods and supposedly they're fresh, which they're often not. And, you know, they're just like a kind of low maintenance coffee situation. I get the idea. Right. And I guess part of the idea, too, that people kind of love about it is you can just make one fresh cup. You don't have to do a whole, you know, drip coffee. You don't have to do a whole French press, whatever. Just they never taste good. I don't know how long the coffee's been sitting in there. I know it's supposed to be like airtight sealed. That coffee's stale. Whatever, where, however long it's been in there, it's I've never had a good cake up before. Um, the other thing about it is, as a host, I mean, it's expensive to buy cake cups. Like, even if you can get them at Costco or you can buy them online in bulk, I've seen them at like grocery outlets before. It's still like st- way more expensive than buying coffee in bulk. Um, the other part about it, as like an environmental nerd, is. These are plastic pods um, that have a biodegradable coffee in them that just get thrown in the trash. Uh, You can't really recycle them unless you take them apart, pull the coffee out, compost the coffee, take the metal top off, throw that in the metal recycling, throw it in the... Like, nobody's going to do that. They're just throwing them in the garbage. (laughs) Like, that's... It's super wasteful. Yeah. So the moral of that story is just don't use them. They're not enjoyable for guests. They're environmentally sad. And they're not that cheap. Right. Like, if you want to be more environmentally friendly and have fresher coffee, just have a drip coffee maker. You can make good coffee. If you have good beans and you have, like, a a grinder and you provide whatever, it's high-quality coffee, your drip coffee is going to taste good. So... 
a drip coffee maker, you can get a fancy one. Uh, you can just get a basic one. I, I try to get a coffee maker. Um, the coffee makers we get, they're a little bit fancy, but they don't have a timer on them, right? Like, nobody needs that stuff. We get the, um, I think they're called Bon Vita. And they just, they have a stainless steel carafe that has like a screw on top that stays warm. Like you just screw the top on so you could stays warm all, all morning. It's great. I use like a metal or a nylon filter so people don't have to use a paper filter and they just compost the coffee and then throw the filter in the dishwasher. So you don't have to provide filter. You know, you can provide filters if you want. You can compost those filters, but it's just another thing to buy and and keep stocked. So and another uh, alternative to a drip coffee maker. So I because my uh, kitchen is so small, I don't really have the counter space for it. And because I only have two to three guests at a time, I use a French press. Um, so that's always been my go to, you know, it makes two strong cups of coffee for two people. You can always do another press if there are more than that. And then the other thing I provide, if someone just wants one cup of coffee is, um, those like pour over toppers. So it's like you have a, you just have a little pour over filter and you put it on top of the coffee mug and you just pour that So that's another just, you know, low maintenance coffee possibility. Right. I like that. I like your pour over suggestion because you're not talking about like a specialty coffee pour over like a Chemex. If you're a coffee nerd, it's not a Chemex. It's just like you can buy a porcelain or or even a plastic. I think dad forever had like a plastic one of these like growing up. Yes. It's just (laughs) like it's got a handle. It's V shaped. You can put a little filter in it. Um, It's a paper filter. You can compost it after. And then you just do a little pour over. I I think people bring them camping, too. That's a a, a great alternative. Just, like, have a couple of those in your kitchen. Like, that's super simple. That's even sometimes nice to have, even if you've got a drip or a French press. I mean, this is, again, we are coffee nerds. So, you know, even in my own kitchen, I'll use two or three different things, depending on my timing, what I want, how strong I want it. Um, the cool one that I have is actually it's plastic and you can set it on the counter and let it steep. And then when you put it over your cup, it triggers the little thing and it opens it up and then it, and then it pours the coffee. That's awesome. So it makes super strong coffee. Yeah, I was going to say. Like, that's <laughs> it's like, like jet fuel. <laughs> and the other thing too, I wanted to mention about French press, um, the, the ones you can get mostly from like Bodum or even at Ikea, they're glass, uh, which is fine, but I found that they break very often. But you can look on like Amazon or eBay and you can get an unbreakable French press that's like, um, it's kind of like an acrylic instead of glass and they're dishwasher safe and they're fine. So if you're worried, oh, someone's going to break this, you know, glass French press, you can get an unbreakable one too. We just got this gorgeous um, glass French press from Ikea. They have like a fancier one for the for our newest rental. And I just looked at Jay and I'm like, that's going to be broken in like a month. So and he's like, no, no, I'm going to try it, you know. So hopefully since we have a dishwasher, it'll stay it'll stay together. But you can buy an unbreakable kind of like travel one, too. That's smart. So what, I'm curious if you've ever used one of those, like, on stovetop uh, espresso makers. What, have you ever used those in your yes. rentals? So, you know, at one point when we thought we were being fancy, we'd be like, yeah, well, I mean, we used these before. It's, it's like an Italian stovetop espresso maker. It's like a mini percolator. It's like, you know, you can hold it in your hand, you like pack the coffee in the bottom, like super tight, and then it you put it on the stovetop and it like percolates into, I guess, an espresso. It's not tec- technically an espresso. And we were like, yeah, people, you know, pe- coffee nerds, are, they're going to love it. And we had it, we had those in both rentals. And in both rentals, what people do is they heat them up on your stovetop and they're super hot and they put it right on the counter. And it burns a nice little circle right in your countertop. Like they just are not thinking. They're like, it's a co- It's not that hot. <laughs> it's like every cutting board had like a perfect burnt circle right in it. And we were like, 
you know what? We're just going to take this away. <laughs> like, we don't need to be that nerdy. So those little Italian stovetop, like, they're, like, stainless or aluminum or whatever. Nope. I would not recommend that unless you have all stainless steel countertops, then you're fine. I, I just don't think there's enough people out there that need something that nerdy. So another thing that you should have, too, is... Um, a kettle for hot water. So like Ashley was saying, like to do a pour over or to make tea. Um, I've definitely been in places where I'm like, I guess I just have to microwave this cup of water to make something, which is fine too. You can microwave it, but it's nice to have an electric kettle um, or a stovetop kettle, just like an old fashioned stainless steel stovetop kettle that goes on the stove. Um, I would say, too, I feel like most of my European guests are often looking for the electric kettle. Yes. Um, I've had people, even with the stovetop kettle, be like, where's your electric kettle? So I just got one because I feel like people look for it more often. What's funny, too, like you said, Europeans and people from the United Kingdom often have electric kettles. Like, they are just like, that's what we have. We have an electric kettle. So one time, this is like one of my nightmare stories. We had this couple and their friend and like all their kids come and they didn't know what an electric kettle was because they're American. (laughs) I just thought Americans knew what electric kettles were. And Jay just happened to be there showing them around the house. And they, they were like getting settled and he was showing them the house and whatever. They took the electric kettle and put it on our stove and turn the stove on. We have an electric stove. (laughs) And it melted to the stovetop. And Jay's smelling this burning plastic, because it's plastic on the bottom, this burning plastic. Oh my God. And there's smoke. And he's like, what is going on? Like he's freaking out. And, And they're like, we don't know what's going on with the kettle. So he takes the kettle, he throws it out the kitchen door. He runs down to the basement and gets a paint scraper and like, because it's still warm, obviously. He scraped all the plastic because it's like a glass stovetop. He screamed. Oh, <laughs> And he's my. like, that's an electric kettle. It's on a base that's plugged in. Like, it's it's an obvious yeah, thing, totally. right? And they took it off the electric base and put it on the oven. And he was like, uh, so, you know... It might be a good idea to tell people, this is an electric kettle. Most people know what it is. That is hilarious. But that's like one of my kettle stories where you're like, oh, Americans don't know what this is. They bought us another. They were really cute, actually. They like bought us the exact same one on Amazon and had it delivered to the house before they left. <laughs> so it was really cute. But it was like one of those stories where you're like, I will never forget that for the rest of my life. Oh, my God. That's amazing. That That is an amazing Airbnb story. So, you know, everything was fine. No one was hurt or anything like that. But you're just like, you know, it is good to explain those things. <laughs> you know, I just, it's always the thing you think you don't have to explain, you know. Our dad is a landlord and has been for a long time. And he always says the least amount of moving parts for tenants, like just the least amount of moving parts, because if it has to move, it's going to get broken. <laughs> I mean, at the same time, it's like we're saying, you do want to have, like, options for people. So, you know, you do want people to be able to make hot water properly and make tea and make coffee and have a few options to make coffee. I mean, it's fine if you have a drip maker and you're like, we have a drip maker. That's what it is, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if you are nerdy, you know, make sure you have a grinder. Make sure you have a French press. It can be an unbreakable French press, so it lasts forever. So, also... Before we end, we need to say people often like to dress up their coffee. I do. I put cream in my coffee. I don't put sugar. But what always stinks is when they don't have any kind of creamer or creamer alternative. And I'm not a big fan of powdered creamer, but I put it in my rentals because um, some people love it. Um, So I have like the powdered whatever. What's it called? Coffee Mate or something like that. Um, I also buy at Walmart, you can buy these little creamers They're but they're real half and half. They're not like fake creamer. They're like, they're called mini moos. And I don't like them because they're plastic and they're like disposable, but I, I need to have things that will last. Like I can't just put a, 
a pint of half and half every single renter. So I buy those, I put them in the fridge, I buy them in bulk, like I buy a big container. Um, And then we just provide like the little packets of like, either, well, we have a sugar thing that you like pour, you know, like an old diner, you're like, it's a big thing of sugar. Um, Not white sugar, we use like, natural brown sugar or whatever it is. It's not brown sugar. It's like whatever. Cane sugar or something. Cane, natural yeah. cane sugar that's like brownish. Mm-hmm. Um, we, <laughs> I'm like, what is it called? Uh, we use that or and we have like the packets of like stevia and we have equal and we have like, you know, it's like three different colors. It's like blue, pink, and yellow. I just buy this stuff at Walmart. Like I just have a little container. I mean, I don't like that stuff. I use stevia on occasion. I just like it for the people who want it. You know, I I try not to be judgmental about what people are putting in their coffee. I'm like, if you want to put, you know, sweet and low in your coffee, you can. Here it is. You you can just buy it at the grocery store, basically. But have those things because people will be sad if they can't dress their coffee accordingly. I have found also any time I put a jar of honey out, it's gone in like a half a day. <laughs> so I stopped putting honey out because I just couldn't. Well, you all have bees, but I don't know. I don't know if you actually put honey out, but I found that if I have honey out in the kitchen, it's like gone. It's really funny that you said that because we stopped putting honey in the houses too. Um, we do have bees. <laughs> we actually have our... It's funny. We. It would be gone. It would... I guess people use it on other things too, and they use it to bake and they use it on their cereal or their granola or their yogurt or whatever. But number one, it would be gone super fast. So I actually couldn't keep up with the demand with our own honey. I was like, my honey's going away and I'm trying to like use it myself. But we would buy little like honey bears. And the problem with those is if there are a few guests that don't use it, it starts to crystallize. And then people put it in the microwave and it melts the bottle. So the bottle gets all distorted and messed up and like won't stand up. And it just becomes an absolute mess. Like I couldn't keep up with it. I think it was like three years we kept up with it. And then finally we were like, no more honey. It's just not. If someone wants to bring honey or get honey at the store, and they do sometimes, it just it, it, it was too much of a hassle. It's so funny that you said that. I'm like, yep, nope, nope no honey. (laughs) Yeah, we just I couldn't it it was just always gone. You know, like I would put out honey and it was just like people just use it and everything. So anyway, yeah, the last Airbnb we stayed in, there was like this little jar of honey that they had in their cabinet. And by the time we were gone, it was gone. People put it in their tea, of course. But then people, people were like, this is like the best, you know, it was like raw honey was so good. They're like, everyone put it on their yogurt, everyone put it on there. And it's just you, you can't keep up with Gone. the demand, yep. <laughs> unfortunately. Yep. So that's about it. Just things to keep in mind. Good quality coffee. Always have tea and black, green, herbal teas. You know, having all sorts of um, options for making coffee and making tea. You know, basically someone should be able to wake up in your house, find what they need, make the beverage of their choice and kind of feel cared for. Good luck. Drink lots of coffee. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Shampoo and Booze at shampooandbooze.com. As usual, you can send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we'll do our best to cover the topics that you care about. Don't forget about our design and listing advice services. Head over to our services page at notperf.com to book your design advice session.